if you want to just go number by number or if there are specific topics that you want to start with. And I think you're muted, sorry. Yep, no, that's, I do that all the time in school. So. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, okay, so you're referring to items for discussion, the reconstruction, starting with item number one? Yeah, sure. I, again, one. we can go in order or, yeah. Yeah, why don't we, and I will share my screen, hopefully. Hopefully this is the right one. Is that what you're seeing? Version. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's anything that you want to preface this with or if you'd just like me to start. Um, why don't we go through and we can um, kind of talk through some of these and kind of hit some of the high points here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll say for item number one, um, one of the takeaways we had from the site visit was that there were some questions about the drainage system within the project limits, both the existing and the proposed. And why in some cases for, you know, I would say the majority of the corridor, we're proposing to upsize some of those drainage pipes to, you know, minimum 15 inches. Whereas in other cases, we were retaining the existing 12 inch pipes. Um, so we went through the sizing calculations that we do to, you know, sort of determine the appropriate in the few instances where we are retaining the existing 12 inch drainage pipes, there's sort of a number of contributing factors. Uh, the first of which is that those pipes are deemed to be you know, in good condition and are capable, they're under capacity at the moment. So when it rains, they have excess capacity that could actually handle more flow. And that's because you know, they're picking up a limited number of structures. It blew it out. Uh, sorry, was someone? Sorry. Oh no, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure no. we weren't chiming in. Um, so as I was saying, they're they're appropriately sized in the existing condition. Um, they're in good condition in terms of service life and you know material quality. And in other cases, as you all know, this is a pretty flat stretch of roadway. So there are cases where it's difficult, if not um, you know almost impossible, to get the necessary cover over pipes of you know a 15 inch diameter to protect them from you know roadway traffic and regular wear and tear on route nine. Um, so that's sort of the reasoning why not every single pipe in the existing drainage structure is being upsized from its existing state, whether that's 12 or, or some other size to you know a 15 inch pipe. Um, so I'll <laughs> I'll kind of turn it over now to the commission and see if there's any conversation around that. Yeah, I think the one of the concerns was for climate change, because this is Tony Lynn brought this up and I had mentioned it too. Um, not sure how much capacity they have, but for us, we were looking at it from the standpoint of you're going, you have a 15 inch on this side, um, you've got a run of 12 inches, uh, a 12 inch pipe, and whether or not um, it made sense since we're doing all the construction um, and to take into account climate change in order to um, upscale or upsize the pipes now versus, you know, five years from now, if um, we know that it may not um, have all of the capacity in the future. So that was... That was the purpose for that. And I'm trying to look at a couple of the, the spots. Absolutely. Um, we definitely heard loud and clear from, from both you and Tony Lynn that the, you know, the climate implications are definitely of critical concern for not just Hadley, but really every community. Um, so what we did look at was again, to make sure that those existing pipes in the proposed condition of the roadway are not maxed out or at capacity and that they do in fact have additional, you know, water conveying cubic feet per second, you know, capacity when we are thinking about future um, precipitation events, both in terms of frequency and intensity. Um, so that was, I think specifically the, the trunk lines in question, 
were towards the, or the, the system portion of the system in question, it's towards the Eastern end of the project limit. Yes. Um, John Tamburini, I think you probably know the exact landmarks a little better than me if you want to, um, if you don't mind jumping in. <laughs> yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, all right, there we go. Uh, yeah, they were right around, I, I remember the ones that we were discussing was right around that um, sunrise uh, printing, I believe it was. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at stations 115, 114. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yep, that was one of the areas that I, I think we had identified as well as um, just up the road, a uh, few stations forward and around like 119, 120, 121. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, so we did look at uh, some of those pipe uh, size and calculations and um, and then it actually is holding, um, you know, it, the existing structures and the existing pipes, they can actually hold up to over three times the amount of capacity that's actually in there right now. Um, we do design it for a 10 year storm. Um, so like Sam had said, they, they are significantly undersized, but, um, yeah. That, that's... So what's the scenario in, say, a 25 year storm or a 50 year storm? Are these systems going to be able to operate? I mean, a 10 year storm isn't much. Yeah. So, and sorry, just one point of clarification. I just want to emphasize again that when we say undersized, we mean they have excessive capacity. Right. Just, yep. Um, so, again, what you're asking. You know, so my understanding is that these are designed in accordance with the MassDOT project development design guide, which is, you know, guided again by the MassDOT hydraulics group. So they have input on, you know, how these systems are designed. And I understand what you're saying about 25 year storm and 50 year storm being significantly more water. But I think that, you know, when we look at the excess capacity available in these, as well as the additional, you know, catch basins that are being added along the corridor, we're going to be able to capture that and keep the roadway draining as well as not backing up onto adjacent properties uh, during those storm events. Okay. Cause that would, that was the main concern. Um, I mean, if you're looking at the storms that we've been having, um, we're having more frequent um, storms in a larger, the larger um, like, in not necessarily one year, two year storms. We're having more on a regular basis, 10 year, 20 year, 50 year, even 100 year storms aren't coming once every 100 year. Absolutely. Coming, um, more um, close together. So that was the concern. And that was one of the issues that Tony Lynn raised because we had talked, um, we had a couple spots where you had the 12 inch and then we had said, well, would it be make be feasible to change it to a 15 inch? So that was that was one of the reasons that we were looking at that. And that was yes, down by between the printer and the home uh, in between Home Depot driveway in there. Those were the areas that we were looking at specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even just being there, I know when we were on the site, we've been there, I think, probably about 24 hours after a pretty heavy rain. And there were plenty of portions on the adjacent properties that still had some, some ponding, especially in those compacted driveways. Um, so absolutely understand the, the concern with making sure that the system has the capacity as we keep seeing those, those trends. Um, and then, you know, just as kind of a related, but a slightly different perspective is, you know, when we talk about, um, the integrity of the system, I, I do want to stress that it's difficult to achieve the necessary cover in some places to upsize and that if we don't have that, you know, appropriate cover, it can then lead to long-term issues with, again, system failure because it's, you know, too much wear and tear and not enough protection for that drainage system under the roadway. Um, so again, that's a, a situation we obviously want to avoid because nobody wants a pipe collapse or, <laughs> 
anything like that, that not only. I mean, I can understand that going from a six inch pipe to a 12 inch or even a 15 inch, but when you're going from a 12 inch to a 15 inch, that's not that significant. It's and not, I think it's just a matter public. of how flat it is. Mm -hmm. And some of the other utility, um, you know, kind of conflicts along the corridor. I know we've got sewer in some locations as well as some other undergrounds that were kind of, uh, you know, weaving around. Okay. All right, well, we'll keep looking at that. We'll come back to it if we have, um, Tony Lynn can't be here tonight, so we'll and continue. Why don't we keep going on wetland delineation? Absolutely. Would you mind if I just made one more uh, note before sure. we moved on? Yeah. I think, Paulette, you had had a question about one area where um, kind of a wetland system drains into an inlet. Uh, yes. In, the, in a similar location. And we did discuss that today. And we wanted to emphasize that we can, uh, at specific inlets like that, we could probably, it's easier at the inlet or, you know, that location. We can look at evaluating or uh, upgrading that to a 15 over a 12 to make sure that it's not backing up um, yep. or causing that ponding. Was, I believe the around between 114, 115. That's correct. So I think that mm -hmm. one we, we might be able to um, to upsize to a 15. Okay, and then did you also look at, um, I'm looking at the stations, we were looking at 109, I guess 108 to 110. There was a system in there. Well, that's where you were looking at. Um, that's right in front of the Chinese Immersion School. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at, we, we can come back to that. Let's go through the list and then we can kind of work our way down Route 9. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so wetland delineation. Um, I know when we were out there, there were just some questions about where flags were, um, how things were flagged. So we thought, uh, I think everyone agreed it would be helpful to get those rehung so that it's clear to everyone. We're not just pointing at, you know, using different shrubs as landmarks. So um, again, it's my understanding that that was all reflagged at the end of last week, the beginning of this week, and that Epsilon was able to get out there along with Matt from BSC, who obviously is the peer reviewer. Um, we were informed that generally some systems or flag series rather were extended just to help, you know, show the tie-in to some of the upstream or downstream wetland systems, and that a few were adjusted. Um, we just received those sort of GIS figures that show that today, and I don't know that I've received the CAD files yet, but of course, you know, we will update any locations on the plans and send you a revised set as soon as we're able to, so that, you know, we're all looking at the most up-to-date flags. Um, and with that, you know, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Madam Chair. I'm not sure if there are questions for Matt or for Epsilon about anything that we saw while we were out there. Yeah, the, the one question um, that I would have um, would be where in particular were these flags extended or in, were they changed? Um, were any expanded versus extended? So again, after a brief review, my understanding is that some shifted. Um, there were minor changes in either direction, but Epsilon indicated that there were no significant enlargements of any systems um, and that some were you know, extended sort of further back from the roadway. But we can share the figures that we received from them with you as well, because they have a nice annotation that indicates you know, which series were adjusted and which flags and, and for what reason. And I'm not sure if, um, I apologize, is it, Megan from Epsilon, I don't know if you want to add anything. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, no problem. Good evening, uh, Commission members. My name is Megan Kearns. I'm a project scientist with Epsilon Associates. Um, and my, my colleague, Carolyn, who couldn't be here this evening, um, she was on site with Matt on Monday to walk through the flags. And she sent this really great figure that Sam's talking about, um, which just sort of dictates um, there are a couple of flags that for certain streams were extended or a couple of flags placed just to better see the curve in the stream to get a more accurate um, delineation there. Um, and there were a couple areas where um, we just needed to make some notes about which flags were connected to what just to better um, better hone in on exactly where that 
that wetland line is. There weren't any significant enlargements of any wetlands. It's mostly just to refine the delineation that was already done. Okay. And one question I have, um, because the wetland delineation, um, the actual delineation that was approved by the commission has expired, um, are you requesting that the wetland delineation be included under this notice of intent? Um, I would defer to you, Madam Chair, if that's appropriate. I would imagine we obviously need to have the delineation certified before we can, you know, right. really proceed with anything. Um, I just, I just needed to hear from you whether. Yes, we, we would, we would appreciate thing. that if that okay. could be done. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm actually going to send Janice right now uh, that GIS figure. Um, obviously, we, we don't need to review it right now, but I just want right. to make sure you have it. Okay, thank you. I think it's the one I, I got right, so from let's... Matt this afternoon. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And thank you, Matt, for sharing that. Yeah, I sent it as soon as I received it. But um, it's useful. It's, I, you know, I think that when people see it, uh, if there are any questions, we can certainly address mm -hmm. them. But it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. And Matt, you went out and looked at the you went and looked at the lines and and agree with a lot of the flagging. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's just keep blowing through this here, um, unless you have any comments on that. No, I, I think for it sounds like maybe everyone needs to take another look take at these look. before. Okay. But yeah, unless there were any other major concerns from any commissioners, but. If not, I think we can move on to another issue that probably warrants a closer look from everyone. Yes. But just as an update, um, you know, last week Janice sent us some supporting documentation from the Home Depot Water Quality Cert, which was very helpful in sort of beginning our uh, investigation into into what exactly is required there. And we did um, obtain a full copy of the document from DEP and are kind of seeking. Um, you know, some additional guidance from them on this. I know from speaking with some of the environmental folks at um, MassDOT that they've never really run into a situation like this before. And that it's kind of there, you know, from previous projects. So I'll just say the sort of gray area in my mind at least comes from the fact that these proposed alterations to the wetlands are also located within the alteration of the state highway layout. So the work will not actually be on the property for which the water quality cert is recorded, but will be technically within the right of way of Route 9. Um, obviously, there's, again, I think there's probably someone who's, you know, at DEP who's qualified to give an opinion on this. Um, and we just want to make sure, you know, both for the town, because we don't want to put you in a situation where you permit something that is detrimental to, to <laughs> the the town of Hadley and we obviously want to do everything correctly. We just want to make sure that we're, um, you know, kind of, we get our marching orders from, from the top, from DEP and respect any conditions that were, um, you know, part of that water quality cert that may apply here as well. So Sam, this is Janice. Are you um, talking to the Western region or the Boston office or sort of where do you go to get this answer? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to lean on Rob Natario here from MassDOT because he was the one that shared the water quality cert. Rob, who um, who actually sent that to you and do you know who the appropriate party for us to maybe proceed with is? Oh yeah, how you doing everybody? Thanks for, for meeting with us. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. yep. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so we're just, um, as Sam said, we're just in the, phase of gathering all the information, being super thorough on this, talking with everyone, uh, with GPI, with MassDOT, with MassDOT Legal, with all different environmental folks. And from my understanding is that we're gonna talk with anybody and everybody at DEP who has, who has a minute to, or two to, to discuss this. Um, so we don't have formal co conversations going yet or anything that I can speak of yet. Um, but we did get their initial help in finding the document from a uh, Western regional office. And we will be speaking, I, I believe with multiple people at multiple DEP offices. Um, we do run into this 
very similar things to this because of the nature of um, highway and road rate projects. So if there's, you know, um, some type of easement restriction, order of conditions or water quality certs or army corps permits, things like that, we do run into that from time to time. But this, you, but this set of specific details we haven't run into before, but it's very similar to doing work on parcels that either have a order of conditions, superseding order conditions, uh, conditions from Army Corps or water quality cert. Um, we're, we're pretty convinced that we're gonna have enough input on it from DP and from other projects that we're, we'll be able to make a very confident uh, statement moving forward with, with it and be, we'll be able to carry forward any conditions with it. We're also asking for a water quality cert for this project as well. So that that isn't going to be known to that DEP reviewer. So that's full disclosure for that. So I can stop there, but I can answer more questions if anybody has any. Thank yeah, you, Rob. One, one question I had is you're saying everything is within the right of way. Um, are there any temporary impacts on the what would be considered part of that Home Depot um, development? Because I'm so looking I, at just west of the driveway and you're showing a proposed um, wetland replication area, which I don't believe is within the highway right of way. There's a couple of them in there. Yep, so reviewing that plan today, and I, I know the area you're looking at, the temporary impacts um, and the permanent impacts to the existing wetlands are within the state highway layout alteration. The proposed uh, replication areas, which are actually on the adjacent parcel that I believe is owned by uh, some sort of condominium complex. Yeah, um, that, that would be part of the whole um, okay. water quality search. Great. Yeah, those those are on that parcel, and those are within a temporary easement area. Um, so I would say all the temporary and permanent impacts that we're showing are within the alteration area, and then the replication areas are within a temporary wetland replication easement. Okay, because you have a permanent easement here, just east of, or just west of the Home Depot driveway. And that would still be their property through yep. an easement. It would just, you know, obviously whatever the, again, I, I would need to review that specific easement right. to see what the purpose is, but I know that the replication easements should only be temporary is my understanding. Okay. So you want to probably look, um, let's see if I can find the station here. Um, I can't see the stations. There's um, Catch Basin 721, I think, is what it, trying to find what the, the stations are on here. And I can't see them on this one. I believe it okay. might be station 124. That's what one of my colleagues just said. Okay. Um, but we will uh, take a look yeah. at that area. Yep. Yeah. If you're yeah. looking at the plans, it's just to the west of the Home Depot driveway on the north side. Okay. And it sounded like maybe John Tamburini, you were gonna say yeah. something. I was yeah. just gonna say that that permanent easement, um, yep, right in that area that you're looking at, that's actually for the overhead wires for uh it, it's a utility it's a permanent utility easement. So they just they have to take it um for relocating the utility poles and it ends up just being an offset from the overhead wires. So it's really just an aerial easement. Um, um, but you're showing a proposed wetland replication area. This is so, on plan 121. I think Seat number 121. Okay. Yeah, I think, and we'll take a closer look at that area, but I think mm -hmm. what's going on is that there's actually just multiple easement lines that kind of okay. all seem to run together. Um, yep. But we'll, we can clarify and even provide maybe like an enlarged copy that clearly delineates everything. Yeah, larger copies where 
there's actually impacts versus the other areas are not are much easier to read. Yeah. Uh, sorry, those 11 by 17. Versus the 11 convenient. by 17, which I'm trying to look at right now. Yeah, so. those are those are good for the, the field when we're on the side yeah. of Route 9, but <laughs> you got to get the and magnifying I, glass. I had to take the glasses on out to <laughs> actually read it. So, yeah. All right. And, and sorry, just to clarify, I know we did send full size copies. Yeah. I mean, we can send more if that would be helpful or even just the impact sheets, but maybe we can talk afterwards, Janice or Paulette, about what you would like. Sure. Okay. Um, I had one other question sort of along this line um, in terms of water quality certs. Yep. I was sending stuff, you know, half an hour ago, whenever it was, <laughs> um, going through my files and finding things and trying to do it while I, I had a chance. Um, I believe that the Lowe's site also has a water quality cert. Um, and I'll try to, I think I have to go back to the paper files to find that for sure. But I thought I saw some mention of it in the stuff I was sending on besides the violations and other <laughs> things that happened there. And it was originally all one site, the, the, what was the bison farm, part of that became Lowe's and part of that Pulse um, cafe and parking lot. So there was a total amount of wetland alteration that was fairly large because of the roadway they put in between Lowe's and the Pulse um, and some other stuff. But I don't remember anything about any limits on it, but um, I'll see if I can find more information to you. But I believe that there's a, that there's a water quality cert on that one as well. Okay. Yeah. Anything you can find or, or share yeah. with us would be very helpful. And I would just say to that, you know, if, if we run into a similar situation there, I would imagine, you know, we'll, we'll disclose that or our reviewer will know that when they're doing the water quality cert for this project and that I, I have to imagine any guidance for that location would be similar to the, the Home Depot. Okay. Um, and we'll incorporate, you know, whatever conditions or, um, you know, future limitations there needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the wetland area, the easement area I was looking at is between stations 124 and 125 just on the north side because on the south side is the larger repli proposed replication area yep okay. yeah I'll, I'll um we can we can look at we can look at these individual sites as we go through but great okay. so let's keep going let's see uh drainage vault yes um so the details for this structure were included in the full size plan set that was sent, but I don't know if they were included in these 11 by 17s. Um, again, I think we can walk through the specifics of it or if there are, you know, I, I don't know how long we wanna spend staring at a, a tiny detail or if we just wanna talk about the vault in general, if there are any questions. I see Edwin has his, uh, his hand up. Uh, where is this drainage vault? Is that by the, uh... Used to be Kitsa's lumber, or is it by the Chinese immersion school? Yep. I just don't know where where that is. Absolutely. So I will specify there are actually two. One is existing, one is proposed. The one that I think we had the most conversations about on the site was uh, across from I want to say the Harbor Freight property. Yes. Yes. Yep. That's correct. It's, so it's that sort of system there where you have the two double barrel culvert discharges that then flow into the culvert that goes underneath the roadway. Right. Um, yes, so that's that's the location we're talking about now. And then sort right. of further up in the system, there's an existing vault that's just gonna be rebuilt because over the years it's it's failed in terms of structural integrity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, and some of the questions we had about that vault, we were trying to um, look at what your numbers were, they didn't seem to add up, at least at that point. Um, yep. It sounded like there was kind of a question about how exactly the bank was delineated. And I yes. think this redelineation has hopefully shed some light on that. And we will overlay those new flags and make sure that our impact areas are still, uh, you know, adding up in terms of, of where the limits of work are shown versus the limits of the bank. Right. I think one of the things we were looking at was... Um, it was like, um, was that the one ten by sixteen? Yeah. Um, ten by sixteen, and oh, we yes, weren't sorry. getting one hundred and sixty square feet when we added them up. Right. Yeah, 
And so I think that, that stemmed from, perfect. yeah, again, we'll confirm that area, but I think part of it stems from the fact that a portion of the vault is proposed in an area that's not um, an existing stream. Part of it's an upland, but, you know, okay. without, uh, well, I, we, I will definitely confirm it. Yeah, because when we were out there, we did not see um, the whole area when we measured it off coming from those pipes, the pipes coming from the, uh, from the east, on the east side of it, that you were going to go in there. Um, where those pipes discharged, there was no upland in there. So that was, that was mainly where the questions were. Mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, I understand that. And it will, um, again, just make sure that the new flags are matching up with, with what is on the plans now. And again, this is an area that I think it would be helpful for us to enlarge and yes. walk through. Yeah, yeah, so I, I was going to suggest that this should get a detail sheet. It would be very helpful. Yes. Yeah. And maybe even some color coding or something too. Um, <laughs> Cause it, it just lines alone even get pretty complicated in that area between what's existing and what's proposed. Cause it seems like there's going to be l a little less stream um, open to the air. Right, it's more of it's going to go into a pipe system, a vault or pipe or whatever there. So, I'd like to see that a little more clearly. It was still a little confusing on site and with the small plans. Yeah, we can um, prior to the next hearing, we'll and we'll try to yeah. get it to you as soon as possible. Put together an enlarged, you know, image of what exactly uh, we're looking at there in terms of what it's going to look like when this is all said and done. And having the resource areas overlaid on there so we can see it because here we really don't see much because yeah, it is so small. Definitely. No, we'll, we'll overlay the flags in that. And, um, you know, I know for, for the purposes of not <laughs> completely color splattering the plans, we did right. keep all the land underwater impacts blue, but for the sake of clarity in this, we can maybe change up the colors So it's clear what is permanent, what's temporary, um, mm -hmm. what's a wetland line versus what's an impact line all that. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to be looking at that modified rock fill. Yep. So again, I think what I captured from our discussion was that there was just a concern about how exactly this mod rock fill was going to be placed. Um, and would it be sort of spilling over compost filter tubes and impacting any adjacent wetlands? Um, you know, from, I think Rob mentioned this on the site, the modified rock fill is smaller than dumped riprap. So it's not like, you know, you're looking at huge boulders and generally, especially in a location like this where we're gonna have, uh, you know, kind of limited space to work with due to mm -hmm. Route 9 being an active right of way, it's gonna be placed with some sort of um, like a shoot method. If I'm, if I'm not misquoting you there, Rob, generally that's how that's done. Um, and that we reviewed our specs and our plans and rather than just compost filter tubes in this location, uh, we thought it might be appropriate to implement a silt fence that'll provide more of a vertical barrier um, for when that's placed to kind of keep it from rolling any stray in, in stray material into the adjacent wetlands. You want to just say that for people that may not be following along quite as well, either because they weren't out there or whatever, that's at the uh, Lowe's, sort of the end of the Lowe's driveway at the, at the lights there. Yeah, That's east of what, what sheet number that is. Um, uh, I want to say one twenty somewhere around there. Hang on, let me try to find um, it. One oh wait a minute. I think it's one fifteen. One fifteen, yes. Thanks, John. Thank you. Yeah, so that want to follow along at home. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And to clarify, I should say that the reason that rock fill is being proposed is to stabilize a slope uh, adjacent to a gravel access path that was requested by the utility companies so that they are able to maintain their utility poles and overhead wires in that location. Um, and, you know, in an attempt to keep the footprint of those areas as tight as possible, you end up with slopes that are somewhat steep. So rather than just, you know, your standard compost uh, mulch and top dressing, we're putting in that modified rock fill, which will be overlaid with plantings and, and compost. But, um, 
you know, that's that's just a slope stabilization method in those areas. Yeah. And again, that. Oh, go ahead. But, oh, no, I was going to say I wrote down the slope um, with a question mark one and a half to one. Mm -hmm. Is that the slope that's going to be there? That was, I think, one of the questions someone had mentioned one and a half to one. That's where the utility pull off the little drive is for access. Is there? Yep. That would be right at that driveway. Yeah. I, sorry, I don't know offhand, John. Do you know if that's about right for that slope? Yes. Yep. The modified rock build. Typically, we propose that when we have um, one and a half to one as the, as deep as it can go is one and a half to one. Okay. And then yeah. So and that was the the question was you know with the filter tube as close as or careful as you are, you're still gonna get some with the filter tube. Um, uh, silt fence against rocks usually doesn't stand up very well, but um, we can see how that would work. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know if there's another method that you've seen used. We were just trying to create that sort of vertical barrier as well. And yeah. obviously keeping in mind that, you know, the Rock fill will be applied in a manner where it's not sort of a <laughs> a it's projectile be, launching down the slope. Clock backing up and dumping. Exactly, um, because obviously that would be uh, quite quite destructive to anything at the toe of the slope there. So it'll be a method that's a little um, more subdued, if you will. Are you going to come up with more of a description on that somehow? Uh, yeah, I think we just need to double check what's in the special provision. Okay. Um, and some of this, you know, is contractor means and methods, um, but we'll see, you know, we have plenty of MassDOT jobs to pull from. And if there's a spec or um, a detail that has been used in the past, we can incorporate that to kind of protect that um, area adjacent to the, the limit of work. Yeah. And then also, um, Janice, I don't know if you were, gave them one of the concerns when we were looking at that particular site was where the detention basin um, is located between the entrance to Texas Roadhouse and what used to be the bison farm. There is a detention basin in there and you're showing um, work and an extension of a pipe. Uh, 28 feet of a 24 inch pipe extension. Yeah, I think that one of the plans that I um, Shout yeah, I believe it's shown on one of the ones that you sent me yeah. this evening, Janice. Um, so what we can do there is just overlay that so that we're okay. clearly showing, you know, what exactly the impact to that detention basin will be. Okay. Yeah. And um, talking about that same area, I, I don't know if Paulette, if you think that this should this should wait, that's okay, but maybe just a little more description of that cantilevered pathway yeah. that's going to be over there. If you want to do it at some later point, that's fine. I'm just on that page. So I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I think, John, I know there's sort of a lot of uh, structural elements that went into the design of that, as well as conversations with MassDOT. So we should have plenty of details about, you know, how it's going to be built and why it was selected um, and sort of distance overhangs and, and all that. And, Edwin, I see your hands up, so I'll uh, yeah, turn it over okay? to you. Uh, Paulette, is it okay if I speak? Ask sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I try not to go on Route 9 that much because the traffic is horrendous. Today, I actually had to go on Route 9. And what is the question that I got is, what is going to happen to the existing sidewalks that are already there right now? Are they going to cease to exist? And if they are, why would you put them there? You, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it's not logical. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's it, just the way things are, I guess. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. I would say that portions of those sidewalks are going to be eliminated because they're necessary for the width uh, that we need to accommodate some of the traffic improvements, whether it's through turn lanes um, <laughs> and that, you know, again, we'll be putting back, um, new sidewalks, new pedestrian accommodations, and 
the last note is I, I understand it's frustrating to see things, you know, sidewalks, roads, whatever it is, get put down and then torn up at a later date. I think, unfortunately, you know, pedestrian and bicycle accommodations is something that's really come into focus heavily for, you know, transportation agencies and municipalities in recent decades. And in the past, um, I think you kind of saw more of a, a scattered approach to implementing those. So you get a short stretch of sidewalk here and then maybe a, a crossing. And then on the other side of the street as part of some new development, there's a crosswalk proposed at the roadway. And it just doesn't lead to, um, you know, continuous accommodations or safe accommodations because you end up with people like us at our site visit, you know, scurrying across the street <laughs> at random locations or standing in the roadway shoulder or, you know, what have you. So mm-hmm. And the other question I had, because we're still dealing with the uh, cantilevered uh, walkway and by, by the lows, for lack of a better term, by the, um, by the bison farm and by the Lowe's uh, store, but um, there, there is an issue with uh, snow removal. And if you are going to build a sidewalk that's cantilevered off those, uh, that knee wall there, is it going to be strong enough to hold snow removal equipment? Yes. So it was actually designed to be appropriately, um, I'm not a structural engineer, but strong enough to support snow removal equipment. Okay. And then also, you know, I'm sitting here and listening to the, all the talks. And when I went on the site visit, I was listening to all the, everything that was going on and everything. And as long as the experts have to keep in mind that the drainage structures that are there that go under Route 9 right now don't necessarily stop 100 feet away. They are currently draining a farm that might be a mile down the road, a mile off to the side. So when Paulette mentions that you're changing the, the pipe size, maybe it'd be better just to replace it and put a bigger pipe in because we don't know what's going to happen a mile down the road on that farm. Absolutely. And if, if you're going to be tearing up the road, now's the time to fix it. You don't want to come back two years later and fix a problem that you should have addressed when you were rebuilding the project right now. Absolutely. And I, you know, MassDOT definitely takes into account, um, you know, system lifespan and, and, sort of financial <laughs> due diligence, you know, spending appropriately. Um, so they hate, never want to duplicate work or, you know, rip up new work. So, uh, you know, again, as I mentioned, in those instances where we have um, flow into the system that's not directly from the roadway, whether it be a wetland or potentially an upland area that's in agricultural use, we mm-hmm. can look at upsizing those inlet pipes to, mm-hmm. you know, 15 inches. And generally throughout the project limits, we are upsizing a significant, um, I don't have the linear foot off the top of my head, but a significant um, upgrade in drainage pipe size throughout the corridor. And where we're not doing that in those small instances, those small systems, it's because, you know, they, they have the capacity, uh, you know, significant excess capacity to, um, right. to continue to accommodate future precipitation and, and you know, rainfall events. Yeah, and and also, I think also when you have to keep in mind that the town of Hadley is in a unique situation where we have a state highway going right smack dab through the center of our town, and it was a man-made project. It wasn't there 200 years ago. It was made by us, and if something can be improved, now is the time to do it. And we have to keep in mind one very important thing that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts invested a lot of its money in APR projects in the town of Hadley that are on both sides of Route 9. They're not just in one area. And so you got to make sure that everything works because you guys are going to be getting the phone calls. Paulette's not going to... the board oh, of yeah. is not get is not going to get it. They're going to be calling you guys if there is a problem. So yeah, if we get a chance to fix a problem now. Now's the time to do it. Absolutely. I'm no, my soapbox now. No, I, I absolutely appreciate the input, and you know, 
like you said, it's, it's a man-made structure that runs through the center of town and mother nature doesn't always respect man-made right. structures. Um, but like I said, I, I do think, you know, obviously MassDOT wants a system that works and is effective and it's been designed in accordance with all the, the regs that go into that for, or not regs, but, you know, design guidelines for drainage. Um, we're putting in new structures where necessary. We're upsizing pipe through most of the corridor. And um, as I mentioned, we can make some changes to some of those inlets that pull water into the system from outside of our project limit to make sure that those are never backing up and causing problems on, you know, upstream or downstream. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think to kind of piggyback on what Edwin was saying and kind of put it into engineering perspective, when you were doing your drainage calculations, did you look at a potential build out of the watershed? Because I mean, where there's APR farms, it won't be built on. But we are running, I mean, the commission right now is looking at a project where um, people's houses are being flooded out or land is being flooded out because upstream was developed. And they took into account what was going on up there, but they didn't take into account what was happening downstream. So I understand that along Route 9, you have the ability to control who enters or doesn't enter your drainage system. But if there are wetlands and waterways that drain into it or go through it, um, if there is a build out up in the watershed on some of these areas, will your system be able to hold co to contain that? Yeah, so again, I think through the combination of, as we discussed, upsizing some of those inlets and then also with the excess capacity that we're seeing in the system, we think that it has, you know, the ability to handle precipitation, but also whatever inflows there might be, um, you know, from related to upstream development, um, you know, with some degree of, you know, we, we can design to a certain level and, you know, so many years down the road anticipating projects. Um, but as you said, hopefully with APRs, we're not worried about those. We're worried more about the unprotected parcels that are right. right and if you if you look at the drainage system on the north side of route 9 you've got change in elevation there so you've got quite a bit coming down um, mm -hmm. south side it's actually going further away from it but again we don't want to have that impact a lot of that goes through farmlands there um, in that area south of route 9 we don't want to keep adding more water through there and affecting um, the, the farmlands or the ditches and the streams that go through those farmlands. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of our concern. And just what we've seen um, just recently, and especially with some of the storms we've had um, within the last two years. So that's been something that we've really kind of looked at. Uh, but to, to be clear, Paula, I mean, I'm not hearing anyone say, I mean, right. for this project or anyone else's project, that anyone's doing any watershed modeling right. <laughs> beyond, you know, um, so, you know, there's no real uh, scaled empirical basis to have insur assurances mm -hmm. for this project or any, you know, five more parcels get built out on Rocky Hill Road and who knows, right? Right. I, mean, I well, think that's, that to, was my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what plus the additional doing? storm events. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the risk is always there. And um, no, I, I don't think anyone can give any assurances, unfortunately. Right. It'd be great if it'd be great if the state did do that. But. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a way to look at, you know, to when you're doing your watershed to do a full build out. Right, right, right. What, what impacts, what right. areas will impact your drainage system? And as I said, under Route 9, you guys have the ability to allow people to discharge into it or not, but you don't control what enters from the drainage area that 
may be hitting some of those head walls and the, work, the water coming downstream. So that's kind of where we're looking at. But the state, but the state or any other, you know, state agency doesn't have that model available to us or to any other developer, do they? No, like they, a watershed? They, sure, they can look at the watershed. They can, yeah. they can look at the watershed and they can uh, just change the classification from open land to developed. When you're, I mean, it's, it's a matter of plugging in areas and numbers, basically classifications to the model. So yeah. instead of going from farmland, you could plug in residential right, right, right. into those areas. So the model exists for the for the relevant right. water. There is the ability. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. There is the ability. So we'll have to look at that and see um, what potential areas there are within this that could be developed that could impact this, just so you guys have that information. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I you know. We'd certainly welcome that information. And as you said, you know, someday D2 will be the ones getting the call that there's a backup and I'm sure you'll hear about it, but <laughs> they'll ultimately be the ones that need to fix it. And they, you know, again, the state always wants to design a system that functions and, uh, you know, not just functions for the next five years, but for the next 50 or hundred. Because we don't want to be back here. <laughs> no, we don't. As much fun as this is, you know. Say that with a straight face. Just so much fun standing on Route 9. <laughs> well, right. there's, a, there's a couple of things going on there, too. I, I want to point out, too, is uh, this is Robert. Um, yeah. Just real quick to add into that conversation is that there's two separate systems going on there. And there's two separate inputs, water moving across, underneath, back and forth on any, any given highway. Now, as far as the highway roadway goes, we want to manage that that stormwater as efficiently as quickly as possible. We think we have an amazing system developed. Uh, dozens of new deep sumps going in, curbing, new pavement. It's just going to manage that stormwater on the highway that much more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about water from other other sources. Let's not get that confused with the water that's actually on the highway coming down from rain because the water from other sources do not, does not contribute to the stormwater that's crossing and on Route 9 unless you're talking about some minimal water coming off paved areas, say, from harbor freight or different things like that. So let's say if there's a 50-acre parcel that's a little ways away from Route 9, it's going to be developed. That water doesn't end up on Route 9. Right. But it right, may right. end up in the pipes that go under Route 9. In the culverts. In the culverts, right. Okay. Correct. But also don't forget about the Stormwater Standards and Water Protection Act. So right. it, you, you could crunch numbers back and forth. And, of course, we look at development. We, look, we always look at development because pretty much when you see a, a town, city, or DOT project going in, what, what do you see concurrently? You see for sale signs for lease development. We always look at those things. We look at open space. We look at the culvert conditions. We calculate out the watersheds. Calculate, calculate out a watershed, it, you know, it's multifaceted. It's something we do all the time. And we looked at those culverts. We looked at the open space. Um, you know, you can't predict what anybody else is going to do on their properties. You can only look at what the watershed is and you can predict the maximum flow or what USGS is as predicting as, uh, you know, or, ordinary flow or bank full with flows for those things. But we can't, uh, we ha also have to rely on Weapons Protection Act, the stormwater standards and common practices of development. So we can't just, you know, look at several thousand acres that could contribute to a 36 inch culvert and then say, okay, this could be, this could be all impervious and every single raindrop is going to reach that culvert. That's just not reasonable. No, no, because we, we, we would never have anything like that. But uh, what I'm saying is 
when you've got an area that's going to be running off. I mean, the last thing you want is 10 years down the road have runoff from um, upstream that's going under Route 9 impact Route 9, the construction that you just completed. So that's that's what I'm looking at is not not the as you said not the water on Route Nine. However, we will get to that um, because you did mention deep sump catch basins, and deep sump catch basins require a um, more rigorous um, inspection program, as noted by DEP's comments. Um, inspections of four times a year. And you're saying, no, we're just going to do it once a year. So that's one of the issues. And then also um, the other issues that will impact your deep sump catch basins will be um, not only snow removal, but um, what type of materials you will be putting down on Route 9 in the event of storms. Are you still going to be sanding and salting? And do any of your catch basins, even though they're deep sumps, do they have anything that if you're going to be using salt, do you have anything that could potentially remove the salt before it goes, gets discharged into the down gradient stream? So those are the types of things that we're going to be kind of looking for um, as we go through. So Thank you. no... I know I had a question and I'm just kind of looking at, uh, I think I'm on sheet, hang on, I'm gonna put these on. Sheet 110, where um, Pine Hill Road came out into Route 9, you were proposing to do some um, grading within up the road there and not touch the head wall on the north side or the east side of Pine Hill Road. Um, but when we were out there, you could see that where drainage comes, flows, sheet flows off the road to that drainage area. And what's going to happen when you reconstruct that intersection there to the water? Because it looks almost, and I'm not sure if that's a berm, uh, some type of a cement or concrete berm, um, or granite berm that you're putting in there, or if that's just the, the heavy line is the um, limits of the work in there. Because we do know, we saw when we we're out there, water does come off of Pine Hill Road, sheet flows from nine, uh, Route 9 and down Pine Hill Road. And so we wanted to make sure that we don't, um, stop the drainage there so that we end up with it pooling somewhere else. Yeah. Um, Paulette, if I can jump in. Yeah. Um, and Janice, I think it might be helpful just for some of these smaller areas. Um, if maybe I could share my screen and we could look sure. at some of the plans together. Sure. Um, and sorry, did someone give a sheet number? Just I'm trying uh, to scroll 110. through here. 110. Perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah, I do remember looking at this area and discussing this with a few folks on the site walk and you can, let me see, share my screen. Um, okay, is everyone able to see that? Yep. yep. And Paula, just confirm that I'm looking at the same area, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So I believe the area in question and if people can see my cursor, um, Try to get is generally in here. Yep. Where You've got retain head wall. You've got an yep. arrow there. Yep. Yep. So yeah, there's a I should say there's a cross culvert beneath the roadway, and then there's a drainage ditch on the uh, western side that's actually behind one of the other uh, sites that the commission was looking at at their last hearing. Um, but regardless, the western or eastern side, sorry, uh, when we were out there, as you mentioned, you could see that from the existing edge of roadway, there were pretty clear indications that there had been some sheet flow and some sediment that was accumulating on that slope as it comes down to uh, this area here. Mm -hmm. So 
in the proposed condition, what we're going to see is that, you know, we're putting vertical granite curbing on Route 9, and you'll have your roadway, which is on this side, your curb line, which is here, and then a vegetated buffer, the shared use path, and then vegetation like it is in the existing condition. So what the vertical granite curbing is going to do is direct runoff that is, you know, from the roadway into this catch basin here. And then the way that this shared use path is designed is that it's pitched towards the vegetated buffer so that basically the runoff from the path here will flow into the buffer and then into, um, John, uh, correct me if I'm using an incorrect term, but I believe there's an under drain there. So it'll infiltrate into the under drain. What happens in the winter? In terms of when there's snow on the ground? Yeah. And we, well, get, a, we get a rain or something. So it, Your again, under because drain, of, it's not going to work. So, and again, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to mislead here. John, is it an under drain or is it just infiltrating? Um, it's just infiltrating. Okay. So well, in some areas, but then there's other areas that there is a sub drain. Okay. Yeah. So misspoke in this area, there is no sub drain. It's just infiltrating into the pervious surface area. So I apologize for that. But um, yeah, I, you know, the slope will lead to the drainage from the path going to that location. And then the roadway will obviously be collected by the catch basin. So mm -hmm. that should resolve the issue of, you know, the overland flow and sedimentation that we're seeing in this location. Um, I understand what your uh, concern is with, you know, when there's thick snow that then gets rained on and you get some pooling or ponding. Um, but again, I think that it'll be kept draining towards the vegetated buffer. And if for any reason it were to overtop that vegetated buffer, it would then be in the roadway and be captured by the closed drainage system. Right. And in the winter time, as soon as there's a snow bank, no water is going to come from the vegetated um, buffer into the roadway. So, and if we're talking about, you know, somebody maintaining and or plowing the multi-use, sorry, I forget the term you used, the, the multi-use walkway there, um, bikeway, walkway, you're going to have snow banks on either side of it. So where is the runoff going in that case? I, you know, it's a good question. I can only really speak to the way it's intended to function. And again, you know, if you see some ponding in areas where the snow is inhibiting the ability of it to infiltrate, um, you know, I, I can't, I don't want to <laughs> tell you that's never going to happen, right. but yeah. See, part, part of the problem is, and from what Mass Highway has said, is that right now they don't have a plan or don't have the funding or the manpower to plow this walkway. So if it is left or required for the property owners to do it, chances are it's not going to get done. And Mass Highway isn't going to do enforcement. I don't know that the town is going to do enforcement all along here. I can't speak for the select board. Um, but if you don't have that walkway cleared and you have a snowbank, then the snow and everything, that snowbank becomes a dam. Mm -hmm. And the water is not going to be getting if there's any melting or water, um, anytime snow is plowed, it sits there. It's the last thing to go is the snow bank. Um, you know, the, the snow on the ground melts before the snow bank does just because it gets compacted. And this particular area where I was looking at was when you grade into um, Pine Hill Road, the water was coming down. I don't know if I can. Can you see my cursor? I don't um, know. If you're coming see. from the, I guess, the south towards Route 9, yes, in that area, there was runoff going down to that head wall. 
And there was the, runoff coming from Route 9, which had actually eroded a channel there. So where does the, the berm or the, the concrete um, stop on that? It looks like there's a, is there a tactile pad there? Is that what those are? Have yep, those are uh, exactly tactile warning pads for um, ADA compliance at the crossings. Mm -hmm. um, I am gonna have to def Sam, if you want me to jump in real quick, this is John Osorio. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, so uh, yes, the, well, that, that edge of, of road on Pine Hill uh, heading north on the northeast side of the, or on the east side of the road is just edge of pavement, but we can certainly berm that edge. I, I do recall seeing that it was washing out. Uh, I will add that we are regrading um, and repaving Pine Hill to grade all the way back towards Route 9, which is why the catch basins are on Route 9 right. on, both, on both sides. So they are, it is proposed to be graded back towards Route 9, but I think uh, it would help to have a berm on that edge, just based on what we saw out there. Okay, because that's the, the head wall and the pipe going through, I think that was a very small pipe, right. maybe an eight inch or 10 inch pipe. I didn't think it was a very much larger than that. Yeah, I think we, it's called out as a 12 inch uh, 12 that inch. goes from the existing okay. head wall across okay. the road on Pine Hill. Okay. So, but it was, you know, overgrown in there, overgrown on your south side too, right. um, in there. And when we looked at that, you said you are, so you've got um, a 24 inch pipe you're proposing. Is that a replacement pipe or is that a, it says proposed class three RCP? Right, so there is an existing uh, 18 inch pipe, I believe that is, uh, that comes into that existing head wall that we are upsizing to a 24 inch uh, RCP pipe. And they're both RCP, existing is RCP and proposed is RCP. Okay, and that's, that's heading, so when you're upsizing that, you're gonna be, so, is that because you've got additional runoff going in there? Because that is actually one of the um, ditches, intermittent streams that the town actually maintains. Is that correct, Janice? That's one of the ones? I'm not sure. I think so, right. but I'm not sure. I right, so we believe, should... oh, Go ahead. sorry. No, no uh, when we did a site visit a few years ago, we we're expecting to see something very different. We were expecting to see far more sediment in that ditch and it was pretty clear that it had been recently cleaned. So I do believe this one is maintained by, um, or someone's doing a lot of clearing without. I think that is one that we did, that the town did, but we can look at our map to see if that's, cause we just wanna make sure that we're not gonna be, if you're, we're getting additional runoff in there, that it's not gonna cause erosion and sedimentation downstream of the um, the ditch or the intermittent stream. Uh, and I, I believe the DPW did uh, ship, uh, provide us a permit that they have for uh, uh, cleaning some of the uh, right. ditches. Yeah. Yep. Um, and just I'll just add that we, in our analysis, we, you know, we, uh, we evaluated the existing conditions, uh, some of it yeah, as we all know, this is a really old stretch of road and, so, and some of the system is, is just as old as the road is. Mm -hmm. um, and it required an upgrade and upsize. Uh, there is about 15,000 linear feet of new pipe that's mm -hmm. being installed in the three miles of road that we're doing. Okay. And then just so now on your plans, you had, we had asked, um, you had said that you are including the water and sewer um, upgrades. Is this one of the areas where that's happening? No, the water and sewer is, where Where's the it? water is mainly between uh, Middle Street and East Street and okay. some parts of East Street and maybe a little bit east of East Street, but it doesn't continue this okay. far. Yeah. All right. Now there might be some areas where our drainage may impact the water or the sewer and we have to make a we have to upgrade at that point. Okay. And just to clarify, and I'm not sure if this is something that, um, you know, would be helpful, but when we create these notice of intent plans, we use 
the drainage and utility plans for the project as a basis. And the plot style obviously is a little different because the focus is on showing the wetlands. We do have drainage utility plans that are um, that don't necessarily show the wetlands like this, but um, we could maybe provide a copy of those if, if that's something the commission wants. Um, I just wanted to make sure that if there are areas that are impacted by wetlands, if it's if the water and sewer are included in these, that they're shown only because we don't want to have to say to the select board, oh, you don't have a permit to do that. Because got it. We want to make sure that that. And now on the north side here, is that an existing subdrain, or is that a proposed subdrain? Um, so there is no, uh, I don't believe there's a sub drain. Oh, uh, there is. I lied. <laughs> um, so if there's a sub drain there, there, so the sub drains that are being proposed are mainly um, to feed proposed trees that are, uh, that we're proposing along the corridor. So it was uh, kind of a. No, it was right near the. Uh, road across the street. Yeah, almost to. Uh, see, uh, proposed 92 feet, four inches. Yeah, see where, no, you're going off. See where there's W um, wetland flags? Go to the east. There we go. See right in there? It says CPP subdrain. Yes, the, the 92 foot, four inch subdrain. Again, those, that subdrain for this whole corridor is in. Uh, intermittent areas uh, or su uh, specific areas to feed proposed trees that are being planted. It is not intended for the roadway. It is, uh, there's a, we're creating a somewhat of a, a ditch in the grass area and uh, uh, our, our landscape architects wanted to provide a system that fed the trees as well. Okay, so. So that does not tie can, back can into the system. Can you explain that a little bit better? Cause I'm, I'm what, what you mean by that? Is it actually going to be like a perforated pipe or is it going to be a ditch or is it? It's a, it's a perforated pipe in, uh, under the uh, ditch uh, of the grass area. It's a very, it's not really a ditch. It's, it's, I think it's a six to one slope on, on either side, little V-shaped ditch. It's and like a gentle swale. Gentle swale, exactly. And uh, there will be some trees scattered along the corridor uh, that we can show you on the landscape plans. Uh, and those sub drains are intended to distribute flow towards the, tr the proposed trees. Okay. And those trees so, aren't no, no idea to us, but uh, our landscape right. architects were, were all for it. And just to clarify, you know, the trees aren't shown here because these are based on the drainage utility plans. Mm -hmm. um, the trees are shown on the landscape plans, which were included in the full size set yeah. and the electronics. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. And then where the, I know you've got, you're talking about the plantings. Is this the side where the overhead lines are? Are you planting? Uh, no, we under? strategically, I mean, there might be some shorter trees that were placed, but uh, we tried to stay away from the overhead wires. Okay. As much good. as we could. Because yes. I, I, it's not a wetland issue, but I hate seeing a tree. That gets split. Yes, that I, I agree. <laughs> has a big hole in the middle of it because yep. the power line is there. The front of my house is like that. Yeah. Uh, the um, yeah no these are uh, uh, specifically uh, picked out to not be too tall in areas where we might be under wires, but mostly try to stay away from the overheads. All right. So now you've we, got the wetlands on that side. Wetland flag Q one, and it goes to I think four or one A, one A two and two A. Um, what is? Oop, yep. Can you go down? There we go. What is the that dashed line? That heavy line right there? Yep. That is, sorry, I'm just going to adjust to find the label. I, I was trying to find the label and I couldn't see it. That is Proposed temporary, temporary easement. easement. Yep. Say that again. Temporary easement line. Okay. All right. Because I, I, it looked like it could at first I thought that was the sub drain because it's right in the, the label is in the middle, but then I saw the arrow going down. Okay. That clears up that one. Yeah. So 
I can certainly keep sharing, but I don't know if we wanted to touch on some of the, I think we got through most of the items that I provided. I know Matt added a few, and if maybe yep. we want to try to get through those. Sure. Yep. Janice, I will turn it back over to you if you want to um, share anything. Oh, Paul, that's the, the one in charge. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, there we go. All right. So there's Matt. I apologize. That was really more of a brain dump than a, a <laughs> well thought out <laughs> list of things. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gives us what we need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, some of the, this was one of the questions about the pipes and the culvert cleanings of, you know, how is that going to happen? Are you just going to use, you know, I, I posed like a jet rotter. Are you just going to like, blow it out? Are you going to have to shovel it? I mean, are things going to be called out like that? Yep. So we kind of reviewed the guidance today. Um, and in our experience, we've never seen a jet router just used to kind of blow everything out at the outlet point. Obviously, that would be very detrimental to anything downstream of that location. Um, so what's going to happen is it's going to be vac trucked through the catch basins. The only instance where you might see some water injected into the system is to push it from a pipe into a catch basin so that it can be vacked, but wouldn't be, you know, blowing out the end at the outfall locations. Um, and I don't know if anyone from MassDOT has any input on that, but that's, um, again, no, uh, no dumping of sediment from the system into the, the wetland end. But that was, we were looking at the specific culverts where, where the culverts go that are set, have sedimentation in them. How are those, you're not going to suck that back into a catch basin. Right. So I think the two culverts we were looking at, um, when they're doing the work to do the extensions, I think they'll be cleaned by hand as, again, that's just my understanding of it. Right. Um, whereas this, the drainage pipes themselves are what would be vac trucked. Right. Um, so and where we where we saw there were a couple locations where you have um, the one by Harbor Freight, that one where you're proposing an extension of the box culvert and two box culverts and the one furthest to the east is actually has a shelf in it that wildlife uses to go back and forth. And so if you're going to clean that out and then what's going to happen once you clean it out, um, impact on the stream further down was one of the things we had talked about. Yep. So we looked at that location today. Um, you know, obviously the eastern barrel or the eastern culvert box, what have you, definitely has a significant amount of sediment in it. Um, how it got like that, <laughs> hard to tell. Um, but it will be cleaned out when they do the extension work. And I understand the concern with, well, does that introduce flow to a location where it isn't currently? Um, so sort of two things there. And one is that the flow volume isn't what's going to change. It's just the location of where it's coming through. Um, and I know there was some discussion of the downstream bank. What we are doing is grading to meet the existing stream channel in that location so that it doesn't just flow out directly from the box um, and, you know, start flowing over into an area that's not currently, um, you know, part of the stream. It's kind of graded up at the top to meet the existing channel and provide some, um, you know, direction as that segment is sort of reopened. Okay. And if we need to, we can look at applying a similar treatment to what we're doing at some of the other locations where we're doing the stabilization and plantings. Mm -hmm. So that, again, you don't have a situation where all of a sudden you reintroduce flow, even if it's not at significant velocities, mm -hmm. into a location that hasn't been receiving it for however long and, and cause some destabilization of the bank. Right, because that area in particular, um where we saw that if you extend out that box culvert, you're gonna to have to do something to the um, stream bank in that area because extending the culvert out, the, the stream bank actually curves so that when the culvert comes out, you may be impacting where it's hitting. Yeah, and 
sorry, I just to clarify, this is the location next to Harbor Freight that has the sort of stormwater treatment up. Okay. Yep. Okay. No, and that's the one with the billboard and the, the yes. undermining. Yes. The area of the billboard, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So we reviewed it today and it looks like there's some space within the easement that we could apply that sort of stabilization treatment with the plantings um, to, you know, not only provide some habitat and a vegetated buffer there, but also create that direction and stabilization for the flow. All right. Good. Okay. And then just so everyone knows, um, we had talked, uh, it's, it's on your page 112, but there is an existing head wall that you're actually pulling back yep. and you're going to be, there's a number of trees there that will have to be removed. Uh, I think we said four or five trees that yeah, are right yeah. there where you're doing the pipe. Is this the Chinese immersion or which place is this? This, this is, sorry. No, go ahead. If you have, uh, before Mill Valley Road. Do you have a uh, sheet number? 112. 112. Thank you. We had, we had stopped and walked behind um, what used to be the fitness place, the gym. Yeah. Down to the back by the woods there. Oh, yes. Okay. Hmm. Did it cut them down? Did it cut them down? Right. No, I'm just saying that that was just so people who weren't on the site visit Mm -hmm. They know that that's one of the areas that will be impacted. There were some large trees there. And just that to sort of give a, um, a summary of that location, the existing outfall um, is in, in pretty dire shape. The root system yeah. from those trees has basically completely ruptured the pipes and um, you know, there's some sedimentation issues. So we are pulling it back to provide um, a pretty significant setback from the edge of the wetland so that it's not discharging directly into it. Also providing a stone pad at the outfall location to give some velocity dissipation. Um, and, you know, if it's something that you're interested in, um, we could look at some kind of plantings around the outfall location to give some vegetation. But I do think generally, you know, we, we want to avoid large trees coming into conflict with the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, That's but, why you know, I was thinking about the sub drain. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Okay. All right, and then you are showing um, a sub drain. I'm just going through my plans on 113. Um, there was a question there because you're showing, okay, the sub drain is actually on the, is on the north side of the road and it's not far from the wetlands. So there's a question as to whether or not that might have an impact. That's sheet 113. Mill Valley Road? Yep. Um, looking at that sub drain again, that's a location where it's just going to be feeding into the tree system there. So the feeding the root system. And, you know, obviously when you look at laterally, it does look close to the wetlands. Um, but I, as we get closer to Mill Valley Road, the roadway starts to elevate above the adjacent, um, you know, areas. This is where we start to elevate also with the Norwatic trail crossing. Yeah. Um, so again, I think the runoff from the shared use path that gets directed into that vegetated buffer and potentially into that sub drain is going to be pretty limited to, you know, staying in that area and, you know, going into the vegetation that's there. Okay. And then when you are looking at your uh, I think you said that was a temporary easement. The darker hatch line there almost looked like hay bales. Um, or if that's your limit of work. Um, um, sorry, just to clarify, we're still on 113, right? Or yes. yes. Yep. Um, and are you looking at the right side of the page or the left side of the page? I'm looking at uh, the left side wetland flag. Um, 11, 10, 9, 8. Yep. Real close. I don't know if that's your limit of work. Um, yep. Right there. So that dark line that you're seeing yep. that comes closest to that wetland flag W10 yep. is the erosion 
control. Okay. So compost filter tube in this situation. And that does define the limit of work that's outside the, um, the daylight line or the limit of grading. Okay, so what work exactly is going on that close to the wetland? Because this is one of the situations where a filter tube may not be appropriate yep. if you're that close to the wetland. So, so can here, you talk about what's going on there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so here we're just looking at, you know, construction of the shared use path and then grading to meet the existing uh, topography of the site. Mm -hmm. So we're tying in above uh, or outside of that wetland area inside of the limit of the compost filter tube. No, um, no rock fill in this location. Okay, and then I think, um, let's see, we had Matt had comment on sheet 114. Yep. This just gets into kind of a summary of the uh, wetland tweaks that we did in the field. Um, so we could go through them, but, but you'll see those um, nice illustrations from Epsilon, um, which, which pretty, do a pretty good job of kind of encapsulating what we saw. But if you'd like, we, I can certainly run through. Um, I just, uh, well, I think your comment said, does not show both sides of the banks of the stream from the head wall. So they did, they did do additional flagging or they will do additional flagging? They added some, yes. Okay, and you were happy with that? Yeah, it was just, there were three flags defining the, the length of, the channel, um, and they didn't really have any direct relationship to the to the banks per se. And they are going to be regrading, um, repositioning the the stream where it where it goes underneath the in, into the system. So, uh, just we thought it would be appropriate to add some detail there, so we understood what was uh, what was happening. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll um, make sure that those new flags get incorporated onto the plans as soon as possible and any changes that need to be made as far as quantifying impacts also get, you know, resolved. And the bank stabilization you're proposing there, that's the, uh, the rock. Yep. So it's underlain by modified rock fill okay. just to give it stability. Um, mm -hmm. because you know, the, the thinking being that, you know, just a, a pile of dirt, probably not enough to give it that direction. Then it's compost uh, or mulch over the top with plantings to give it, you know, additional stability through the root system and to provide, um, you know, habitat value. And also, as we kind of mentioned, the goal here was not to just do direct, you know, outlets diagonal to the existing or the proposed widening, but provide some natural sort of sinuous stream channel that is going to create a little, uh, some degree of shading and, you know, really habitat value overall, not just a, a sun-baked sort of ditch, if you will. Will there be monitoring uh, along with your replication areas to, for invasive species over, you know, a, a period of time on those yeah, locations? Definitely. Uh, the invasive species monitoring I believe, you know, whatever the requirements are in the special provisions and anything that the commission wants to include in the order of conditions for the replication areas. Um, and then also, you know, we do have a special provision for invasive plant management strategy throughout the corridor. And I, I know we provided that to you, Matt. I don't know the number. I believe it's four years, though. And certainly throughout the duration of construction, which I think we've discussed before, could be up to five years. Is that right, John? Uh, yes, that's correct, Sam. Yeah. So at least through the term of construction, we'll be implementing that invasive plant management strategy for the whole corridor, not just um, you know wetland areas. So is that something you could? Um send us as well? Is that a huge thing or whatever? I'd just be interested in seeing um, what is recommended or proposed or whatever for that. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we have a document. It's a PDF of the selected special provisions for the job. We just try to extract everything that's related to wetlands, drainage, 
um, vegetation or invasives so that, you know, things that fall under the commission's purview and we can share that with you. Okay. Yeah, because typically we like to have you propose it and yep. not have us have to write it. Yes. So if you can provide that to us, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, because if you have it in your specs and we leave something out, it's better to have you submit it to us what you're going to be proposing for your Absolutely. Uh, contractors to do. Yep. I will, uh, I'll share that with you, Janice, as well as okay. um, any other follow-up that comes out of this meeting. Yeah. All right. And then on, on that same sheet, um, you talk about, you've got some additional work on um, the approach or um, um, where the rail trail crosses under. Oh, yes. Yep. And do you want to share that? Here, I'll stop sharing and you can share. Yeah. Let me just. Is that on the so that's kind of. Nine? That's uh, sheet 114. Excuse me. Um, so you're talking, I would imagine, about this area. Yeah. And. So, sorry, let me get the cursor back. Um, yeah, it's just a minor extension of the existing crossing of the Norwatic Trail that goes underneath Route 9, um, you know, on the, the north side of the roadway. Yep. We have a boardwalk, and we're not touching anything on that side. You yep. know, the boardwalk or the wetlands there comes under the roadway, comes out on the other side, and uh, yeah, just because of the you know, the grading and the widening that's proposed on Route 9 to provide the bike pet accommodations, we are going to extend that culvert. It's a, it's not conveying any wetlands or uh, waterways. Sure. It's just the, the trail. What is on the, the north side there? Where wetland flag U3, 4? Up here? Yep. Yep. That's the limit of work. It comes right up to the edge of the wetland. And it's another and compost work, filter tube. What is the work that's happening in there? Um, I believe that's another spot where we're looking at modified rock fill. Right. So that's another look. Oh, why? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, just because of the, the slope to provide stability. Okay. Is there going to be the pedestrian, the dual path on that side too? Yep. So is the that, path that's, is here. Okay. So you're constructing the path there. Um, what is that slope going from the path down to the wetland? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if we can get that quickly right now. Okay. Um, I can jump in real quick. Any, any, anywhere where we show the modified rock is because we're with the slope is one and a half to one. Okay. So, so anything more than two to one, we provide modified rock. Okay. So that may be an area where the tube, the siltation tube or sock would not be appropriate, possibly, especially right adjacent to, to the wetland. There's methods too to avoid that. Um, one of them being working backwards up from the bottom up. The, the first few feet of the stone is placed in, up against the tube and they work up the slope. Um, all that's surveyed out in in uh, painstaking detail, uh, there's a number of you know means and methods that the contractor, with oversight of DOT, that is going to use. Uh, but we'll definitely take every precaution not to to create impacts there. Okay, so what you just said, it would be nice to have that submitted to us. So we don't have to. If something happens, we don't have to say, well, you know. Robert Natario said you were going to do this, this, and this back at that meeting, just so we have that, you know, in areas where you are adjacent to, you know, within a foot or two or right up to the wetland edge, that there are certain uh, methods that you will be doing. We can add that to the special provisions and, and show you the special provisions when okay. it's all done. That would, that would be good. Okay. And then I think the next thing 
he had was um, on sheet 115. And yeah, on. this is in the um, that uh, replication area at Lowe's. If I've if I've got my landmarks correct, um, yeah. the uh, if you're familiar with it, when we were looking out over that wetland replication, uh, the, the yeah the um, that wetland area. Mm -hmm. Oh no, not not here. Um, on uh, sheet one fifteen. Hey, where is that? <laughs> oh. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was the Lowe's site, yeah. wasn't it? Oh, yeah, sorry, that. Matt. Are you talking about the replication from the previous project? The previous project. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I jumped to ours. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, so when we walk down on the on the west side there, where there's proposed fill, um, we walk down and hit the, the the head the wall, the concrete vertical wall. And the wetland really goes right up to that. And particularly down at the stream where the stream enters into um, the, the culvert that goes under the road. Um, uh, you know, the, the flagging was set back about four feet or so from, from the, the wall itself. So we just um, bumped that up to the wall itself and connected those, those um, flags so that that's gonna add that's going to add a little bit of, um, you see how that, you see how, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, our, it's, it's hard to tell which flag this is, but the R1A, R1A. yeah, see yeah. how far back it is from the actual wall? Mm -hmm. um, it, the wetland really does go up to the, the wall itself. So I think this is going to have an impact where, um, in your calculations where that, yeah, exactly. That's all going to get added in okay so you'll have yeah, some additional yeah. square footage of temporary impact at least all right yeah and we'll um like i said as soon as we have those flags we'll we'll get them on there and we'll revise these and, and send them to you with updated totals so that it's all you know in line yeah. with what we saw in the field if you can go yes west <laughs> Yes. To, yeah, west. <laughs> I think it's uh, yeah four where uh, right where it says Route Nine, right in there. Um, were those wetland flags okay? Right in there where the culvert extension is going to be. Yes. Yep. Okay. That was fine. Right, because you do show a permanent um, BVW impact there with the red on there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I will say, you know, we'll, we won't just spot check all these. Once we have the new flags, we'll go through the whole corridor and just make sure everything is consistent with, with what was lined up there last week and, and on Monday. Mm -hmm. While we're in the same spot, um, is this where the cantilevered path is going to be? I cannot figure that out from these plans. Um, I know we talked about it in the field, but I can't quite see where it is on the plan. Yep. Are you able to, or here I can draw, that's a helpful way to do it. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, John or John, but I believe it begins right about here. Uh-huh. Yep, that's correct. And then it continues to the east throughout this section. Let me just get back to my cursor. Whoops. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the jump. Fun, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then terminates Apologies, I'm using three different commands at once here. Uh, <laughs> wow. Terminates here. Okay, so that dark line there. Yeah, so you can see this is this sort of uh, where it dog legs here in this L shape. That's one of the structural elements that shows where it begins and ends the cantilever. And then obviously we are tying into oh. sidewalk here. So is it actually raised? But I, when I think cantilevered, I think of sort of like offset sort of or something, but it doesn't seem to be. Is it just raised? Or do you have a side view or something that, that shows it? Yep, I believe we have a detail of the cantilever that we can provide, but just for sketching purposes yeah. and for here right now, you know, if we imagine that we're standing in a ditch and looking at the roadway from eye level, yeah. you know, here's all your fill, yeah. travel lanes are up here. The cantilever is basically going to be 
off the side of the roadway like this oh. Oh, okay. with, you know, bridge rail. Okay. To keep. So it's going to look something like that. And then, All right. um, you know, as we discussed, we'll confirm this area here where the potential, whoops, temporary or, you know, whatever, whatever class of impact they may be um, mm -hmm. need to be quantified. Okay. And again, I know we have plenty of structural plans that show that and we can share those as well. Okay, that'd be good because I'm just having trouble visualizing it. And yep. and how much, so it's it's not, it's not entirely off of the present area. It's just expanded a little to each side. It has wings that extend into the air, but generally not the whole thing. Exactly. Um, okay. I, it's about six feet, Sam, six to seven feet. Yep. And I, if I remember correctly, you know, the existing retaining wall there, John, is relatively new and in pretty good shape. Correct. And the thinking was, you know, it's kind of an undue financial and wetland impact burden to remove all that just to build a new wall when we can do a short distance of cantilever that'll provide the, you know, the strength and, and safety improvements we need. Uh huh. Okay. Well, yeah, definitely. Thank you. That helps. And I would definitely like to see some other side views or something that. Sure. Go a little better too. I'll put it on my list. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Right, and then if you want to show 116, you just have one area on that, mm -hmm. uh, wetland flag E one through five. Yep. You've got um, permanent um, and temporary impact. Yep. This was flagged as a isolated vegetated wetland. And these impacts are really just a result of the path construction and then grading out to meet the existing uh, topography adjacent to the project limits. Um, so the permanent impact in the red is where we're going to have fill associated with that grading. Then we have our compost filter tube, and we extended that yellow area out to capture, you know, the temporary impact area that may result from them installing the filter tube um, or any construction phase site access. I think that's one of the areas that um, I just sent you a plan on where it's actually a BVW, not an isolated. Okay, I, we can certainly look at the plan there and then I would also just maybe defer to Matt and um, mm -hmm. Epsilon on the matter. I don't know if. The, the, the other plans from um, actually that's Texas Roadhouse there um, showed a pipe going in and coming out. And I guess that's why it was, that's what it was, it was labeled as and treated as before was at the BBW. Okay. I didn't look at that in the field. So, um, so I'd like to hear from Epsilon on that, on that point or, or, or see what you have Janice. Sure. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I think, um, so I personally didn't do the delineation. I was doing the wildlife habitat evaluation that was submitted. Um, and I can, I can talk to folks who are in the field and see if they can get you guys an answer for that. Okay. Thank you, Megan. I, and then we go on to um, the stream restoration 117. let's see You're this is um this is the vault and the the location where the downstream bank is maybe of concern mm -hmm. right so we we did talk through that already tonight so i think just when we see the um the blown up plans with yes. flagging that would be good to review yep and just for an initial point i know it's hard to see on the plans that you have the the grading line that we're talking about is here um to meet that existing channel and we could potentially implement that stabilization along this edge of it. Um, but again, we can look at the new flags and get an up, a full size version for everyone to dig into. Yeah, and then also make sure, I know Janice, you sent them the plans or gave them the plans for um, Harbor Freight in that area. Yes, yeah, that shows the, the stormwater um, Management. part of that, of that area, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and 
thank you again, Janice. We will try to get some overlays or at least indicate, you know, limits of, of those on some hey, of these plans. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it was so last minute, but that's it's the first open window I had. So Nature of the job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll send you a few more things. I, well, maybe tonight. My, um, uh, other my nighttime reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and then you had on 119, to, I'm not sure we talked about this, the north side. Yep, this area. Yep, did we talk about that one yet? I don't think we have. Um, okay. Without seeing the notes, I would imagine there's probably flagging adjustments here. Actually, we did not look at that one, um, but it, it would be the same, it's the same issue. Um, it's kind of light on flagging, um, but you've you've calculated um, impacts for both sides of the, the stream, but you don't have both sides flagged out. So um, that was one that we we missed when we were um, out there the other day, yesterday. Okay. So that um, one to revisit. Yeah, I think we'll see if there's any adjustments to that series that just didn't get a chance to see in the field. Um, yeah. And if not, we can always have it adjusted if need be. Yeah. Yeah, because you do show, you don't show anything on the downstream side. Shows uh, drain. Yeah, that's, shows. sorry, I it's believe the on the downstream. On that side. It doesn't show anything. So it doesn't look like there is anything on the down, on the south side, I should say. Correct. Uh, my understanding of this location, um, you know, regardless of the flagging, is that this is one area where a wetland flows into the drainage system and then is sort of in there for quite a while. It's not a direct under the road crossing. Okay. Do we know where that discharges? Um, off the top of my head, I don't, but we could certainly follow just via the flow arrows and the, the okay. pipes that are shown. Okay. Uh, it discharges to the west, I'll say that. Okay. Yeah, I see some wetlands down on the lower. And it goes into that large cross culvert by the Chinese uh, version school. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. And then if we can just keep going, let's see. I think we talked, did we talk about 120? Got to. Um, good question. Um, I, I think don't. we did. That was one of the areas. Um, resource area, let's see, that stations one, like 116 and a half to 119. Mm -hmm. Where you've got um, resource area M proposed 577 square foot temporary impact and then 1,033 permanent impact. Can yep. you just describe what's going on there? Yeah, again, so this is just to accommodate um, some of the widening that we're doing as we come into the intersection here uh, to provide improved operations there. It's currently a, you know, one of the points that causes the excessive um, delays on the corridor. So, John, I, I mean, we're also doing Ooh. the pedestrian accommodations here as well. So it's just grading to meet the existing topography and the widening for the intersection improvements. Okay. That's correct, Sam. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if we wanted to get into the exact, you know, configuration of the intersection, but generally that's that's the work there. Right. Widening to widening and then proposed sidewalk guardrail and, uh, and slope treatment. Which intersection is this? This I is. Mean, uh, I know. I know. Home. It's. It's quite a ways west of Home Depot. It's just as we start to come into that intersection approach um, okay. where you're providing, you know, key, like space for traffic to sort of queue up, turn okay. lanes, things like that. And is this, you said all of this work is within the road right of way or you have temporary easements or permanent easements here? So this is one of the locations where we are proposing work that's within the state highway layout alteration, which um, is probably a little more clear on some of the other plans we submitted, but I believe it starts right here. Uh, John or John, if you can 
It, uh, sure. Yes, uh, Sam, let's see. That line seems appropriate. If you follow that line to the east, you'll probably see a, a uh, note that says proposed state highway layout alteration. Yeah, so it's this line here and then it comes, you know, so we're That's following right. yeah. it here up and then this dark line back here is the limit of the state highway layout alteration. And again, I'm just looking for, an, yes. So proposed state highway layout alteration. And as you can see, both of those impact areas um, are within the bounds of that layout alteration. And as we discussed, okay. we just. That will be an interesting question for DEP because those are part of the wetlands that were, I think part of the Home Depot yep. development. It's parcel C. Parcel C, yes. Proposed organic broccoli field. Yes. So that that's a DEP question. Yes. To get clarified. Yep. Yeah, we'll that's get their opinion on, way the, above on my the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> way above my, all right. And then we go down, we talked about, let's see, we talked about everything on the north side. So 121. Yep. We talked about that. What about on the north side um let's see what did we want matt you have yeah, so north side there was just some again uh we just fleshed out the um wetland delineation in um between the bvw and stream bank um because as it is on the current plan uh flag Oh boy, M15 ties directly to Z1 and then bounces out to M16. And that just wasn't refined enough. So we added some flags and, and that should look a lot more realistic when, when we see that projected later. Great. So is that the one right before the bus station? Yes. Okay. Yep. And and the verge there where it says grass, uh, just to the south of the replication area, mm -hmm. that's all that um, re uh, reed canary grass, that oh, bank okay. of reed canary. Yeah. Um, but I did look at the soils and there were worms in it. So I, I, I think we're okay, even though it, one of my, <laughs> one of my uh, colleagues is a soils guy and he says the plants are always lying. So. <laughs> <laughs> have to remember that one yeah. no but we we had discussed just sort of internally with MassDOT as well about you know potentially seeing facultative wetland plants in sort of buffer zones and, and areas adjacent to wetlands and maybe that was the case here um, but mm -hmm. if the soils look good then that's that's good to hear yeah I, I think I think we're okay with how it's how it looks there yeah Great. And have you had a chance to look at the um, stream bank the stabilization and the um, I think the wetland replication area, the plan for that area yet? Yes, yeah, we took a look at that. Um, that was our last our last site uh, yesterday. Um, and it looked good. I went out, I was concerned when we were out there um, on the 10th, I was concerned that that proposed replication area was, might be wet. Um, but it uh, same same sort of thing as on the other side. A lot of reed canary grass, but um, the soil it, you know full of worms and um, no reed ox. So I, I was happy with uh, with how that was delineated. That's good to hear, Matt. And I do want to just clarify because I think maybe there was some confusion on the site visit too. I think we may have been looking at the western side of the bank and referring to that as the replication area which is where I believe there was actually some wetland flagging added on that side. Correct. But this side is where the replication is. So I think there was um, a miscommunication on my part saying that it was up here when in fact it's down here. Yeah. Um, and again, any new flags in this area will be updated and we don't really have any uh, work down in this area where I believe they are, but we'll confirm that. And that's next to Four Seasons liquor store or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. they're, their sign is here and yeah. then there was this sort of upland area where we saw some of that, the grasses that we thought maybe were indicative of a wetland. 
just for anyone who's still watching and hasn't fallen asleep, <laughs> they're going to try to follow us at all. Just <laughs> give us some help. <laughs> all those folks that were yelling at us on the site visit from the road, I'm sure they're going to do Right, and you are basically, it looks like we are, you're going to be doing some work north and south on South North Maple and South Maple. Yep, that's correct. And I don't recall wetlands in that area. Yeah, nothing was picked up. Um, I'm not sure if that has changed, but okay, yeah, okay. We, we aren't aware of anything there. And I think when we consulted with DCR as well, because that's one of the locations where there's a connection to the Norwatic. They didn't have anything that they raised either. Mm -hmm. um, I know right below the Norwatic yep. or above the Norwatic off of South Maple, mm -hmm. there is some wetlands there right below it. Um, but I, you're not going down that far, correct? Uh, I don't believe so. If you where the rail jammed. trail crosses, you're not going further south on that end. No, I temporary easement. Sorry, this is on South Maple, right? Yeah, I think it's on 125. The sheet, if, if I'm right, in where you're talking about, maybe I'm not. Um, let's oh, see. Next one. Okay. Yep. So Norwatic right of way is here. You can see in the gray the existing trail. There's a pull off there. We're doing some work just to tie in to the existing trail. Um, you know, we are putting back that island and then some tactile pads at the crossing location. And then we just tie into the existing pavement at about station 51850. Um, and that's the limit of our work. So I'm not sure where exactly those wetlands you're referencing are, but if they're below the driveway at 27 South Maple or further south, then they're likely um, outside of our limit of work, including, you know, any buffer zones, because we're looking at, you know, 100 feet here between 519 and 520. Yeah. Janice, do you want to make sure they get the plans for that area? Okay. There. All right. From the east side, right? Is that what you're talking about, the southeast corner? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I know when the delineation was initially done, we did ask that they, you know, go up the side streets. We gave a full you know, graphic of the project limits. So yeah. um, I, I would imagine they didn't find anything that was within the, the distance we had specified, but we obviously will okay. wait for confirmation from your office. Yep. And then Janice, when Allard Farms, their access road there, um, which would oh, be yeah. on the, like, on that plan on 125, the lower right-hand corner. This area? I'm looking at my. I see a uh, property line yes. for Allard's Farm Inc. Yeah. yeah. Were we didn't? Were there some on either side of this access road, Janice? Um, we'll have to look. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I know accessing Allard's going that way. There was some stuff there. Yeah. So we'll we'll take a look at that. Okay. Okay, and then, yeah, so, and then on North Maple Street, there mm -hmm. are some, how far are you going up there? Because there is some drainage and I think detention pond um, adjacent there on the east side of North Maple. I don't know how far up you're going. Yep, so we're coming up to... Um... There's the McDonald's um, Verizon yeah. driveway, and then there's the next driveway, the road that goes in, the access road, because there are there is a wetland adjacent to that area there. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm... I think it's a detention area. Okay. Um, John Tamburini, if I can lean on you for some landmarks on this section, I just don't know. Uh... Do you mean it? So uh, if you're, yeah, right. so the, the driveway that. there, that's yeah. to Home Depot, yep. that one. And, and then, then the, that area is a detention basin. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. on the other side, though. When you uh, go, 
when you're looking at, you've got um, McDonald's, I think, Verizon. Verizon. And there are some wetland areas or detention areas along the east side of North Maple Street in that area. In the previous page. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. 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 So where is, where is you you're not showing anything there, but I know. I think they're further up. Um, Are they further up? I, I may be mistaken. I thought they were no, I think by the driveways. No, because they aren't really. The, the driveway to Verizon and McDonald's, and yeah, then the next right. one up that goes to the um, Wind brick Wind building. Wind 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 Wind. Yeah, that's where it starts. It starts on the back side of that building and the back side of the parking lot. In right. The north. So that is that's that that is actually on sheet one twenty nine. So, yeah. well, so are we talking about further up in this area? No, it'd be. Sam, we're talking about that last driveway right there where you're at. Yeah, right, right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're referring, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the uh, the ortho image on yeah. maps right now. So generally in this area, like. Yes. I don't okay. That yeah, yeah. I, I think if. Um, I don't think it's that if there are plans, that might be helpful just because it wasn't picked up as um, a wetland in our yeah. delineation. Yep. Might not be. And we're not widening in that general area past that driveway. Uh, we're meeting existing. Right. Yeah. So you're showing um, proposed 15 feet of a 12 inch pipe. Right. Is that so? Is that discharging into that existing area there? So it's that's what we just got to see where that's discharging. So it's, that would be an inlet. So it's receiving from that that side. It's receiving from that side. Okay. okay. And so that's the ditch that gets filled with uh, litter. Right. Right. There's a ditch in that general area, right? Yeah. Okay. Which is within the the town right of way. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I'll take a look too. Yep. Thank you. And let's see, let's, what else is, so then the only other things we have on here, um, so we're still reviewing runoff calculations. Um, there were some comments from regarding your response to DEP. Okay. Have, um, you, have you had a chance to address these yet or no? Um, sorry. Can I stop sharing and then you can, I okay. haven't seen yep. anything yet. Okay. Uh, All right. um, and we'll certainly reply to everything once we uh, have a yeah. copy and, and have some time. Yeah. So reviewing the runoff calculations. Um, Response to comment 10 did not address DEP's requirement for specific review of LID BMPs in stormwater report. Okay. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll have to review our response and then we can yep. give some supplementary information to BSC. Yep. And then, so we've got... Um, and I know this is, this is not uh, Dom's complete uh, okay. review yet. This is kind of an initial, initial, yep. uh, cut. initial take, right? So, and I brought this up about the catch basins four times a year, um, inspection and or cleaning, um, and that's again the uh, operation and maintenance plan. I know in yours you said that you do it once a year, um, but the Owen DEP requires four times a year. Um, yeah. And some of these will just confirm with MassDOT um, yep. what their strategy is district by district. And again, right, we'll, so, we'll respond so, to all this. Um, yes, once we it's don't have to go through these one at a time. Um, this is just so that you have, we got this information, you're, you'll have this information um, and go through and please make sure 
that you have addressed DEP's comments. Yep. Yeah, we'll, um, yeah. we'll double check. And then as soon as we have these, we'll make sure that any specific concerns brought up through BSC are also, you know, revised or, or supplemented as necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anybody else got anything to add? <laughs> no. No, we really killed that one. Well, it's good to do this. That's why we only had you on here as the only hearing tonight. So. No, we, we really appreciate this. And, you know, I know it's a massive job, but I think between the site visit and being able to talk with all of you tonight, I think it's been pretty productive so far. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for, for our very special <laughs> singular hearing. Well, it, it beats 11 o'clock meeting, so. That's fair. <laughs> um, all right. So we will continue. Uh, Understandable. To our, where's, what date is it? July, what? Probably the 6th for the first uh, of the month. Or yeah, sorry. No, second, the second, second Tuesday. Second. second Tuesday. So that will be the 13th. Yep. Perfect. And we yep. will work on getting, um, I guess just as a clarification, you know, obviously I imagine Matt and, um, sorry, is it Dominic doing stormwater? Yeah. Uh, you guys will probably provide like a formal letter with all these comments that we can then reply to at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and one of the things that I'm, that I haven't had a chance to drop tonight, um, I'm really kind of curious and teasing out how you're parsing, um, you know, uh, the limited project projects versus non-limited and, and so forth. So I'll, I'll try to detail my thinking on that and see if, you know, but just be thinking about how, how you, how you want to kind of address how you're thinking that through. Yeah. I think we can definitely put together a supplementary. Um, I would imagine it's probably something we want to do with the commission present, but if you have any questions, you know, feel free to give me a call or we can set something up with, you know, Janice or, or however we want to handle it, but we'll be prepared yeah. to, to talk about it more either way. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll get you your uh, comments to actually respond to. Yeah. And uh, it, you know, I have a few items, Janice, I've been trying to keep running notes here, but you know, we've been going at it now for a couple hours. So I'll <laughs> send another follow-up email to, to our whole team here with just some of my takeaways. And if everyone else could maybe add any supplementary items that they heard or information they wanted so that we can you know, provide a follow-up again prior to the next hearing so that we're not, you know, kind of spinning our wheels on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think covering, answering those DEP comment questions will help because that gets into some of the limited projects you're, you're proposing that you fall under a couple of different limited projects, which areas are those? And then there was the difference between degraded and developed riverfront area and that was something that we were interested in knowing the specifics of what's being called what because sometimes people you know accidentally you know mix it up so yep. um just to clarify we're getting down into the weeds with that but that's sort of the level that eventually we're heading towards so um and like i said a lot of that is in the uh dep comments at least generally and that's so we'd like to make sure that we understand that stuff because that's stuff that I'm going to have to put into an order of conditions and roof. I am not ready to explain <laughs> it yet. <laughs> yeah. If you could put that together in a nice, neat little table for us, yes. that would be even better. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. And I have a CAD file that we use mm -hmm. to calculate those degraded areas. I'll say offhand, they were only those that are completely absent of topsoil. So pavement or gravel parking that's heavily compacted. Okay. We can also maybe overlay it on um you know just a map so we get a general yeah. idea of you know it's really just the roadway width i know there was concern about you know like we weren't counting any lawn areas or anything like that um okay. but again we can save all that for our next uh our next round table on this yeah good can i make a quick comment sure yeah, absolutely. um there's been a Hadley snowmobile club in town since the 70s uh, we talked about this before, crossing Route 9, and now it's pretty much you guys are shutting us off for the most part. Um, all I'm asking is some help so that we can go underneath Route 9, which is the safest way to do it. It's better for us, better for everybody. But DCR, I mean, DEP is not cooperative whatsoever. And you're, this project is going to stop us from cut us right in half 
We can't get to the mountain house without going underneath Route 9. We put a mat down. There's only a couple months of the year. It's very limited snowmobiling in the valley, but there is a club here. And we've been doing this since the 70s. I don't know. I know you guys own the road and DCR owns the rail trail, but I'm just looking at some help here to try to go underneath Route 9 with a mat. Yeah, uh, completely understand that. And John and John, I know this came up at one of our site visits. I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, no, it has been discussed. And, and uh, Steve, I don't know if we met you at one of the public hearings, but it, it was brought up at a public at the 25 percent public hearing. Uh, I, it is DCR that owns the tunnel. You know, we can we, we can continue to discuss it with District uh, 2 to see if there's been any progress on those discussions. I know it's been higher up than us uh, that those discussions are being had. But we can try to follow up year after year after year. We had we we met two Sakite meetings with senators and state reps, and it's just like everybody's kicking the can, and they have been for years, not just a month or two. It's been years, and we just need some help. It's a common sense thing. You know, go underneath it. Everybody's safe. We don't. It's it, it, it's common sense. Just need some help with uh, DCR. So yeah. we'll save that for the next meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Sounds Thank good. You. Thanks, Steve. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any comments? All right. With that, I will take a motion to continue to July 13th. We'll say seven o'clock. So move. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Who Aye. seconded? Uh, Edwin mo made the motion. Yeah, I Steve mean, seconded. Steve seconded. Okay. And um, I just want to, do we want to put them on first? We will have other projects coming back on the agenda or is it sometime after seven? How you uh, well, typically we list like three things at seven and three or four things at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. So we can take them in order. But if we have shorter things before you, Yes, we and will ongoing. Yeah. Put those, so yeah. Stuff. We have a couple things that are like quick. So we yeah. can do those. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. All right. Be in touch. Yep. Yes. Commissioners, <laughs> don't run away. Um, all right. We do have a request for certificate of compliance. Um, 170 225 Rocky Hill 46 Rocky Hill Road. Road, it was a garage addition, right? Uh, uh, where is north on the map? I can't, I'm, I'm thinking it kind of goes this the, way. there's a ditch that goes across the top of the property. It's one of the you know the main ditches that yeah. across 47. That's on the north side. Um, so the wetland is on is on the left side or the west side of okay. the map. And Paula, can you maybe put a map up though? If Across from my mother's house, that one. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I understand, but there's just there was no I ninety yep. percent sure that yep. it's going to be. Hang on, let me. So I don't know who looked at their emails, but it sounds like Edwin did. So that's good. Um, I did. Yes, of course. <laughs> basically the the issue is that this um they were supposed to put in a row of blueberry bushes and this the is, owner said he tried yeah. doing it but um is this the right stopped. one yeah this is the right yeah one. that so those are like the old and then into the newer you can see the area and back to the left keeps getting more and more overgrown and so originally they were supposed to plant something in the back area that was like a mowed meadow but it's wetland um, and that has stopped. And basically now it's, 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 it's wetland, but it's a lot of brush and trees and stuff as well. So that edge of the, of the trees and the lawn is about 90 feet from the perennial stream ditch. Um, and so they're in the inner 100 um, foot uh, riverfront area and the wetland extends a fair ways out so that the the mowing that exists now is actually right on the 35 foot buffer of the wetland. So the, so one thing is how to 
like we usually have people do, you know, birdhouses on poles or posts or something or, or plantings, but in this case, there are too many plantings already. Um, but how to, how to get some kind of demarcation for future owners, because this is being sold now and in, into the future, that this is the end, this is as far in as they can mow towards the wetland. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is in the top corner, he had opened, he had cleared an area to plant all the blueberry bushes in one spot, because he just didn't understand what we were saying or what the plan showed. See, the plan has an arrow for plant six high bush blueberries, and it was supposed to go in the existing wetland meadow that's outlined in blue, but he put it more or less where the pink area is or approximately where the arrow is. So he actually cleared a part of that 35 foot buffer in order to open this up for the bushes. The bushes didn't grow, so he put two large stones in there instead. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of see that there. So at this point, what I think you should do at least for that is to tell him that he has to let that regrow. He yeah. can move the stones if he wants. They're sort of nice, big, flat stones, but he's actually much closer to the wetland. He's probably 10 feet from the wetland in that clearing now. Um, but so it's that to allow that area to, to regrow. And then what kind of monumentation or something do we want to put on that edge of the um, lawn versus um, trees and shrubs? Yeah. Doesn't it look like there's an edge there already with all those bushes and stuff? Yeah, but it could change over time. Usually we require some kind of monumentation, whether it's fencing, posts, rocks, you know. Should we take measurements from, from, the, uh, from the building? Well, here's just here's say, one of the... This, this far away from the building, you, you stop mowing. So here's yeah. part of the, the issue. Um, yeah. They are within yeah. the 35 foot buffer zone. Yeah. So if you see, so the distance, here is the 35 foot buffer zone there. And it kind of meanders back and forth a little bit, but they have a straight shot. They are, see there's existing lawn here. Yeah. And here's the 35 foot. So they are completely within the 35 foot here. Yeah. So that's existing lawn. So we don't want the lawn to keep creeping further. And yeah. Janice, one thing that I was going to ask is, do we have in the not original notice of intent, does it talk about, because we had our 35 foot buffer, did it talk about allowing any of the 35 foot buffer to go back to lawn or not to be maintained in lawn? I don't think so. Let me pull that. All right. So we can, we can look at that, but this is an example where um, don't know why um, we allowed, you know, work in that 35 foot buffer line. Mm -hmm and we don't want it to go further. Mm -hmm. I don't think it said anything. Um, if you take a look at, there are two other um, maps or plans that I um, sent you to, and one I've sort of color coded the, or highlighted the, um, the map a little more. Um, and it also shows that area that was, you know, um, cleared. Okay, hang on, there. let me see if I can pull and that I'm out. Looking in the notice of intent and it, doesn't this Chuck did this one? Yeah. Um, and I don't see anything about that. It just says um, propose, total proposed degraded area project work will be less than 10% of the riverfront. Native plantings are proposed as improvement to the riverfront area erosion and sediment control. That's sort of all. I, I don't know how we missed the rest of it, or maybe because it had been in existence. A while already we just let it go it's either the one that starts with a one or a two or a three it's like highlighted map or highlighted plan was that at 4 30 or was yeah. that monday no it was 4 30. okay that's the one i had up then it's a different one that's the one that's not highlighted that we didn't have the both stuff. maps i had here well, here's one that's highlighted hang on 
I know there's a lot of, so that's why I tried to number like one, two, and three are the, the best ones to show stuff. Yeah, is this the one? I don't see it yet. Yeah, it, my screen keeps disappearing, but yes. So that just shows in the upper corner, it shows the existing lawn within the 35 foot. So like half of the 35 foot is already in the lawn. And then up in that Northern corner is that little extra area approximately where he hollowed it out for the stones because the blueberries didn't do it. Right. Um, so right up in here needs to be restored or yeah. to allow to grow back. Yeah. And there should be something along. I mean, we can, we can make a suggestion. He said that he, you know, he's, he's fine. You know, he's, just trying to get this sold. And I told him it won't be anything, you know, exceptional. We'll just do, it needs some kind of monumentation. He said, fine, you know, we'll do it. Either he'll do it. He'll hire someone to do it. The new owners to be, will do it um, or, or whatever. So I suppose we could give them an option and just say, you know, do posts or poles or stones, or just tell us which ones you're going to do and space them. And we'll have to figure right. out, you know, approximate distance or something like that, depending on what they are but just something. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I like giving them the option of yeah. establishing something there yeah. that they can live with. Yeah. Um, you know, we could give them a suggestion. You know, you could do some posts, you could do uh, fencing, but if you do something like a split rail fence or posts or birdhouses or some stone set and on the wetland side you don't do anything on that side you mow yeah. on one side but not on the other yeah what do you guys think about that sounds good okay okay and i know they're trying to get this done right. so i'm going to talk to them and they can get back to us and maybe get it installed and i can look at it before the next meeting yeah Thank you. yeah that would be good Okay. So what do we do about the, uh, the other business? Okay, so we've got, you don't have any bills? Nope. Okay. Uh, no other, that's it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the other thing, just to, just to say, um, I told uh, Paulette about this, and I don't think I don't think we need a formal vote, but just so you know, and so that it's on the record, um, I was out at the Aspen Heights that um, new apartment right. building that used to be the Amherst Motel and the large level lip spreader, they didn't do a storm, regular storm water. They did this thing where everything's supposed to sheet flow and it, it sheet flows out near the friendlies. It comes out basically near the lawn back of friendlies. So I've been watching, it's been flooded, ponded for basically a couple of years during construction. And it still was so that some of the area that's supposed to be vegetated immediately below the spreader isn't and it's still um, bare. And I, I sent Paulette a couple of uh, a sheet with some pictures on it of um, taken today. So I met with the engineers today and the construction people and they um, proposed a, a, um, a solution which seemed reasonable. They're going to move the erosion control back. There's a big uh, mulch tube, you know, those, those big orange and black tubes that are filled with, with mulch. And that's actually blocking the water from leaving this ponding area. So they're going to move it back closer to the wetland, which is on the other side of their fence, and then put in um, seed. They're going to rake, and then they're going to seed, and then they're going to put this sort of jute or, or some kind of netting blanket on top of the area so that it won't erode and it has a chance for the seed to, to, to grow. And um, it'll be a seed mix that can take either dry or wet conditions. They call it a detention basin seed mix from New England wetland plants. So um, that seems reasonable. I told them it sounded good. There's no expansion on the limit of work or anything, but that I wanted, since we had the meeting tonight, I wanted to let you guys know and if there were any concerns or something or reasons not to, to go ahead to, to know about it. Did you, were you able to get one of the, the pages up with the photos? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find it and I can't find it's it. One of the last minute things too. <laughs> All right. I was still doing it after coming back this morning and running into everything else. Yeah, I was just looking to see if I had them under anything. All right, let me see. So I have the the letter 
but I don't see oh. the one, the letter, but I don't see the, um, the plan. From the them. plans. I know I saw them. Yeah. But I don't. Okay. Well, I don't know if anyone has any concerns in general about it or whether you're comfortable just saying, yeah, fine, fix the problem. You know, yeah. Basically. I mean, they basically they proposed what Janice and I had talked about and Janice yeah. had suggested mm -hmm. um, without suggesting it to them. They proposed, you know, remove the sock yeah. that's there that prevents water from flowing. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to um, put a mesh fabric down with um, seed stock in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then that will stabilize any um, straight uh, bare soil that is there. And also fixing a few other areas where it's sparse. Yep. It's in uh, upland areas, but near the wetlands or near that area, they're just going to uh, rake the soil a bit and add more seed for the areas that haven't taken. But a lot of it's taken well in some spots they, they still have to correct. Yep. Okay. So other than that, um, I, I don't have a problem with them um, because they, they haven't requested a certificate of compliance yet. Right. So it's still under um, construction. Mm -hmm. So does anyone else have any issues with that? Nope. No. Okay. Nope. All right, then looking at our agenda, uh, we don't have any other topics. So the only I move other. It again. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have second. a second? I have a second from, I believe that was Jim. Yes, that was. And uh, any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Any Aye. intentions? All right. Aye. Good night. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Yep. Good night. No.